Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're looking at the recently released Battlefield 5 and seeing how it stacks up to its year-old competition, Call of Duty World War II. I've looked at these two games in the past when Battlefield 5 was still in its beta state, and while Battlefield 5 looked better in most cases, there were quite a few instances where Call of Duty looked a bit better. But now that we have the full Battlefield 5 experience to work with, we can compare some more similar environments in addition to the full weapon roster. And before we begin, keep in mind that both titles are being run on the PC platform, with the settings pushed to their highest graphical options at a 1440p resolution. The only exception here is that ray tracing for Battlefield 5 will be disabled, and the super sampling options in both titles, also known as resolution scaling, will be set to the defaulted 100%. Alright, so to kick this comparison off, let's begin by looking at some weapon model comparisons. Starting off, we have the classic 1911 sidearm, which for the most part looks the same between games. However, I will point out that the 1911 in Battlefield does have a more worn design to it, making it look like it's seen more combat. When firing the weapon, the difference is immediately apparent. The muzzle flash, as always with Call of Duty, is greatly exaggerated, with a massive burst of light coming from the muzzle that takes up nearly half the screen. Battlefield has a muzzle flash, but it's much less exaggerated and will only appear for a single frame. Both guns seem to properly eject the bullet casing after firing, something that I noted previously wasn't appearing correctly in Battlefield, though I'm curious if they managed to fix the issue with the other weapons. Moving on, we have the MP28, an updated version of the MP18 submachine gun. This SMG seems to switch things up, with Call of Duty now having the more war-torn appearance, whereas Battlefield's MP28 looks much cleaner and blends in more with the game's environmental lighting. Though you can still see some of that same worn metal look towards the back end of the weapon in Battlefield, similar to the 1911. When firing the weapon, we once again see that exaggerated muzzle flash from Call of Duty, and much more subtle muzzle flash in Battlefield. The light from the flash is blocked by various objects alongside the weapon in Call of Duty, creating some nice, albeit fuzzy, shadows. Battlefield seems to do this as well, with some small pools of light hitting things like the player's hand only at certain spots to simulate a shadow projection. The biggest difference here though is the reflective surface of the metal barrel and shroud, which appears much better in Battlefield, even without its ray tracing effect enabled. Next we have the MP40. Again, you can see the superior reflective surfaces in Battlefield, with the gun metal properly reflecting the environmental lighting and helping it blend in more with the game world. The firing animation also looks more organic in Battlefield, with the gun swaying in all directions as the character struggles to maintain the full automatic recoil. Call of Duty's recoil, however, feels more artificial, with the gun bouncing around in the character's hands but not really moving horizontally at all. This is likely more of a gameplay choice though, as Call of Duty aims for a more arcade-like approach. Both games also seem to have different reload animations. After emptying the magazine completely in Battlefield, the character pulls back on the cocking handle and locks it into place, replaces the magazine, and then releases the handle. In Call of Duty, the character immediately replaces the magazine and simply pulls back on the cocking handle to begin firing again. Next, we have the Bren light machine gun. Here, we can see that the Call of Duty model looks more worn down this time, with scratches along the magazine and a much duller metal appearance. But the real difference I want to point out here is the significantly different rate of fire. The Bren in Battlefield fires at nearly twice the speed, which is more consistent with the real-life counterpart. This is very unusual for Call of Duty, especially considering past games in the series have featured the same weapon and had it firing at its normal rate of fire. Moving on from weapon models, let's look at some environmental textures. These seem to have remained unchanged from the beta version of Battlefield, with most textures looking vastly superior to Call of Duty, except for dynamic objects like sandbag walls and vegetation. Since Call of Duty maps are entirely static, things like bushes and decorative sandbags feature more detail and higher quality textures. These objects in Battlefield are part of the hundreds of other dynamic objects in the game that could be fully destroyed either by explosives or by running over them with vehicles. Not to mention the sandbags in Battlefield are mostly player-made objects from the fortification tool. Now, let's talk about lighting. Previously, I was stuck using only the beta maps for Battlefield, which included either a snowy mountainside or the brightly colored streets of Rotterdam, closer to the start of the conflict there. But in the final version of Battlefield 5, there's more maps that seem to match the style of what's seen in Call of Duty's map designs. For example, we have a map in Battlefield 5 that shows the Rotterdam area reduced to ash and rubble, which matches the war-torn Akin in Call of Duty. Using these two maps, we can see a significant difference in the lighting used, with Call of Duty's lighting feeling even more pre-baked and lackluster when compared to Battlefield 5's darker, grittier tone. But that's not to say this is the case with all of Battlefield's maps and lighting. Both games feature a brightly lit French countryside, with small buildings and churches, which makes comparing them even easier. Again, we can see that Battlefield has much more impressive lighting effects, with god rays pouring through the tree leaves and better global illumination. 
Next up, let's look at some shadows. In Call of Duty, the player's own shadow is never visible to the player, and the only dynamic shadows in the environment are various other players. There are some static shadows built into the maps which look nice, but they're often very difficult to see, likely to help keep the maps bright and competitive. Battlefield, however, has more dynamic shadow effects. Players can see their own shadows, in addition to their own character body, and the shadows in the game world behave realistically to the game's dynamic destruction effects. Next, let's look at some of those special effects, starting with explosives. Explosives in Battlefield are significantly more impressive, which makes sense considering how heavily the Battlefield franchise leans on its destructibility. The explosive effect in Call of Duty is mostly a large fireball sprite, with small traces of dirt and very few particle effects. The explosions in Battlefield, however, feature significantly more detail, with plumes of smoke, dirt, and fire all combined to make a much more convincing effect. These explosives also will directly affect the environment, causing nearby objects to be damaged and the ground to be permanently destroyed throughout the rest of the match. In Call of Duty, grenades and dynamite fail to impact the environment in any way, outside of a scorch mark on the ground. Fire effects generally look better in Battlefield as well, with more color variation and a greater amount of smoke. But considering how rarely fire appears in Call of Duty, it's still impressive looking. Smoke effects, however, do look better in Call of Duty. The smoke grenades in Battlefield fail to react to the game world's lighting effects, making them appear almost the same regardless of where the smoke is thrown. However, the smoke effect in Call of Duty has this nice shadowing effect that makes it appear like the light from the sun is hitting it partially, which is a very nice looking effect. The smoke itself, outside of lighting, is much denser and more complex in Battlefield, and plays a much more significant role in the gameplay. Water effects are also much better in Battlefield, but this is understandable considering water plays almost no role in most of Call of Duty's design. Water in Battlefield, however, can be used to traverse the large maps, and will react to player interaction. And finally, let's listen to some sound comparisons between these two games. Which game do you think has the better overall sound design? And that just about wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, Battlefield still has a significant leg up in the competition. Call of Duty World War II isn't a bad looking game in any sense, but the engine used to build the Call of Duty franchise is struggling to keep up, with things like lighting and more dynamic effects feeling stale by comparison. However, there are a few issues with Battlefield V's animations, with things like the bullet casings leaving the weapon prematurely, and even clipping through the receiver at some points. It's disappointing these problems weren't fixed after the beta, but hopefully they'll be addressed in the future. But what do you guys think? Which game do you think looks better? Let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.